Donkey Kong really was Nintendo's breakout arcade game here in the U.S. They had success over in Japan with other arcade games, but here they kind of were lacking in sales, especially after Radar Scope didn't sell anywhere near as well as they had hoped. Donkey Kong was originally going to be a Popeye game, but unfortunately they couldn't get the licensing for Popeye, so the game had to be reworked into what it is now. And you can kind of see what they did with changing Popeye to Mario, uh, Olive Oil to Pauline, and Pluto with Donkey Kong. Shigeru Miyamoto created a story for Donkey Kong, which is pretty interesting, even if it is simplistic. Donkey Kong was Mario's pet, and Mario was mistreating him. So in retaliation, Donkey Kong broke loose, kidnapped Pauline, and climbed some scaffolding. There are a lot of similarities with King Kong and Donkey Kong, not just the name, but also in the fact that Donkey Kong kidnaps a woman and climbs a building, much like King Kong did. There was so much that Universal actually sued Nintendo for copyright infringement. Unfortunately for Universal, they had also sued uh, RKO Studios to prove that Donkey Kong was in public domain so that they could make a remake in 1977. One interesting thing that happened with the Donkey Kong cabinets is a lot of them were made out of the old radar scope cabinets that Nintendo couldn't sell. Donkey Kong was really successful in the arcades, and it also became a pack-in game for the ColecoVision. It's just one of those really cool games that's pretty simple but incredibly challenging that was just all over the place in the arcades. Donkey Kong was one of the first games that really told a story. Yar's Revenge also did, but Donkey Kong did theirs in a much better way, where you actually played the story out in the game. It was followed on by Donkey Kong Jr., which continued the story as you play as Donkey Kong Jr. trying to save your dad from Mario. It's kind of interesting that Mario is the villain in this game. Normally you think of him as kind of the heroic plumber, but... Here he's kidnapping people's dads and holding them hostage. What they did here is pretty cool where you're not just, you know, jumping over barrels and avoiding certain, you know, flaming things that are coming out of trash cans. Here you're actually climbing up ropes, you can jump around, it's a lot more fun and it kind of takes advantage of the fact that you're supposed to be playing as an ape here. This game was a little bit more complex than the first Donkey Kong, just because of the number of obstacles and everything that you had to get around. It made for a lot of challenge, and I could see why this game was pretty popular in the arcades. It wasn't as popular as the first Donkey Kong, but that was just because the arcades were sort of having their first real decline. One thing that I never really thought about when I was playing this game as a little kid, and that's that Donkey Kong's kind of a crappy dad to Donkey Kong Jr. I mean, he's making him go out and climb all around on all these chains and everything to try to save him, when he really doesn't seem to have been there very much for him. Also, where was Donkey Kong Jr. the entire time? I mean, Mario had Donkey Kong as his pet, and then you just never hear anything about Donkey Kong Jr. till it's time to save his dad. So what happened to Donkey Kong Jr. after this? Well, it's a little weird, and we didn't find out until Donkey Kong Country, when it was revealed that Donkey Kong from the original series turned into Cranky Kong, and Donkey Kong Jr. turned into the Donkey Kong of Donkey Kong Country. So after Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. had a nice story going, we get to the third game, which has nothing to do with the previous two, and in fact you play as Stanley the Bugman, who hadn't been seen since a Game & Watch game he was in. And then after this, he's never mentioned again for some reason. So if I've got the story right from what I've read, uh, Donkey Kong 3 wasn't sold as an arcade cabinet, so you're probably wondering how there's a cabinet here. It was sold as a conversion kit for your Donkey Kong cabinets. And that's how we get the cabinet that you see in the picture. 
Donkey Kong 3 is a weird game in this series. It's kind of a combination platform shooter where you spray bug spray up Donkey Kong's butt in order to get him to leave your greenhouse. So for some reason, Donkey Kong is pissed off at Stanley and wants to capture his plants and is bringing an army of bugs. It's just, it's so frickin' weird. It's a fun game, but it's just a very, very weird game. You really only have one power-up in this game, and that's like the Super Bug Spray. It allows you to shoot all the way across the screen, and it makes the game just a little bit unfair. But thankfully, it's not a permanent thing, it's only temporary. It just obliterates everything on the screen, and it can get really, really amazing. It, it, it's just crazy once you get that. For being as simple as it is, it's a pretty fun game, and there's a bit of a challenge in it. One weird thing, though, I just cannot understand why, why Donkey Kong is so obsessed with Stanley's plants. Like, why is this gorilla so angry about, you know, Stanley growing plants in his greenhouse that he feels the need to break in and just do whatever? It's a weird, weird game. So I just want to mention Donkey Kong Jr. Math. It was the only educational game that was a launch title for the NES. It's just your basic learn how to do math. It's pretty simple, it doesn't go into anything complex, and it's fine for what it is. If you want to try it out, it's really not that special of a game. So these three games are all pretty solid for what they are. Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. are both very, very good. And I think Donkey Kong 3 is kind of underrated. It's my personal favorite out of the three, but that's just because I like it for how weird and unusual it is. Sometimes I wonder what would have happened if Nintendo decided to go with Donkey Kong as their flagship mascot instead of Mario, or if they decided to go with Link or, Met or uh, Samus as their mascot. It's just kind of a weird thing. I'm not 100% sure why they went with Mario, but I guess you'd have to ask Nintendo, and unfortunately they're pretty tight-lipped about stuff. So anyway guys, that's going to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Please let me know what you think in the comments below, and have a great day everyone.